Dead Man Walking, the most iconic lure in tornado history. While potentially the most chilling observed tornado phenomena, the science behind it and deep-rooted origin makes it far more interesting than just pareidolia. Pareidolia is the psychological term for perceiving likeness on random unrelated objects. Common examples that folks experience are the man in the moon or seeing different shapes of animals in the clouds. The most famous example of the dead man walking pareidolia is this iconic image of the Gerald Texas F5 taken by Scott Beckwith. In the image, many people make out the two legs of a figure walking in stride, while some further seeing the upper half carrying a scythe, the iconic tool wielded by the Grim Reaper. While it is interesting to see how the human mind can give meaning to random images, what exactly is the dead man walking that we're seeing? Most people, when picturing a tornado in their mind, visualize a singular funnel reaching the ground. However, tornadoes come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, and will often change shapes throughout their lifespan. At peak intensity, the Gerald F5 tornado was a stout stovepipe structure resembling that of a wood stove exhaust. But before that, when it was just getting going, it looked more of a needle or a very thin rope-like tornado. To get from here to there, it had to go through an intensification that would take it into a multi-vortex structure. While the dead man walking is most commonly associated with the famous Gerald image, it has also been tied to other multi-vortex structure tornadoes in the years since Gerald. Now, multi-vortex tornadoes are not multiple individual tornadoes, but rather sub-vortices within a parent circulation. Let's take a closer look at that. To form these subvortices, there is a breakdown of the original vortex. At first, the tornado is purely a result of the updraft of the parent supercell thunderstorm. Air is rushing inward to fill the gap left behind by the air that is rapidly rising. If the vortex continues to strengthen, the pressure at the surface becomes low enough to introduce a downdraft in the core of the tornado. This is a breakdown bubble. The bubble will widen out the tornado as the downdraft occupies the center of the vortex. When it reaches the ground level, multiple areas of convergence form between the central downdraft and the outer updraft, spooling up subvortices as they rotate about the axis of the parent vortex. Particularly with stronger tornadoes, sometimes the multi-vortex structure can occur almost immediately. Here is a multi-vortex tornado shot by my friend Kelton earlier this year. These subvortices are much more powerful than the parent circulation. As they orbit about the main vortex, they will move with great forward speed as the motion of the tornado and the rotational speed of the center slingshot the subvortex. Meanwhile, the subvortex on the opposite side nearly comes to a ground relative standstill as the rotational and forward velocities combat each other. Subvortices are often responsible for inconceivable damage patterns, like where one house is flattened while the neighbor's house next door is still standing. When the Gerald F5 matured past its multi-vortex structure into a stovepipe, there's a lot going into the strengthening of that tornado that we cannot fully see. Thankfully, thanks to high-resolution supercomputer simulations of tornado-producing supercells, we have a better understanding of how tornadoes can be strengthened through vorticity aggregation or vortex merging. Along the forward flank of a supercell, there is something called the Streamwise Vorticity Current, or the SVC, where vortices are constantly being entrained. Eventually, as the updraft gets stronger and deeper to the ground, the pressure drop follows with it, and then ultimately we get a tornado thanks to the aggregation of those vortices. But even once the tornado is ongoing, there are still vortices that are being entrained in that SVC that continue to add and strengthen the tornado as it continues through its life cycle. Most of the time in the real world, we cannot see these additional vortices as they are not strong enough to condense water vapor or are simply hidden within the chaos of the forward flank. While the dead man walking is certainly a frightening appearance thanks to how the human mind perceives its surroundings, ultimately there is much more that goes into the tornado vortex than what we simply picture in our minds. Making up that parent vortex are just a bunch of other smaller vortices that have been aggregated over time, which is pretty fascinating if you ask me. Now taking this in a completely different direction, we have to talk about the phrase, dead man walking. Where does this come from? 
1999 TLC documentary on the Gerald event, the narrator claims that this is a Native American legend. Quote, An ancient Native American legend speaks of the dead man walking. If you see him in a tornado, you are about to die. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of the multi-vortex tornado approaching. The dead man has just walked into Gerald. An ancient Native American legend though is pretty vague. I'm no history major or anything like that, but I do know that Native Americans are very diverse and there are dozens of tribes that have spanned hundreds of years of history. So this is just a non-answer as far as I'm concerned as to where the origin of dead man walking comes from. In an attempt to cross-reference this claim, I've ultimately found that it's apparently pretty controversial. After several hours of digging online, I was only able to find a single source that pointed to the origin being within the Cherokee Nation. However, this was only cited in 2022, and this is well after 1997 and that 1999 documentary, so this phrase associated with the tornado has been in circulation on the internet for quite some time. So I want something else that I can cross-reference that predates 1999 or 1997. The earliest publication that I could find with the phrase dead man walking was in 1861, and it was a completely unrelated context from weather. Additionally, any references of dead man walking that I could find up until 1999 had no at all correlation to tornadoes. Interestingly, a year and a half before the Gerald event was the release of the award-winning blockbuster movie Dead Man Walking. Now, while this movie was about a man on death row and his spiritual advisor, completely unrelated to weather, that phrase has now entered the minds of people. And if we cross-reference with the Google Ngram tool, the phrase dead man walking skyrockets after 1995. So here is my theory. Granted, it's a little bit far-fetched, but I think it's plausible given the lack of evidence. In 1995, you have the release of the movie Dead Man Walking, and that phrase gets implanted in the subconscious as it's a major motion picture that many people see. A year and a half later, the Gerald event happens, and not long after that, the making of this documentary starts. The creators of this documentary come across this image and the pareidolia effect kicks in, and they make out a shadowy figure walking in this tornado. Next thing you know, in the spider web of a creative individual's mind, they connect deadly tornado, dead man walking, and then all of a sudden they put together dead man walking and associate it with this tornado image. And a little bit of creative writing later, you craft it into this Native American folklore story that you can make the documentary more entertaining with. This is obviously getting borderline conspiratorial, but we know TV can be not necessarily the most truthful thing sometimes. And in the internet age, people just kind of take it at face value, people just run with it. And it kind of just gets implanted in the minds of everyone down the line. And here we are just reiterating the fact that it's a Native American legend. I will admit that more research needs to be done into this topic. There probably is stuff that is obviously not on the internet that needs to be dived into further to really get to the bottom of the answer to this. But honestly, a theory like what I just proposed isn't completely out of the realm of possibilities. It could just be coincidences lining up, but at the same time too, I wouldn't put it past TV writers to do something like that. At the end of the day, I'm an engineer by training, not a historian, so this is well outside of my realm of expertise. So if you have any sources or anything that might point to a more definitive answer as to the origin of the Dead Man Walking story, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. I think it's safe to say I'm much better off talking about vortex dynamics than I am Native American history. As always, everyone, stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.